one, I'm telling you, in this season, you should be you should be more closer to God than you've ever been before in your life. You're going to hear some stuff today, and um, I'm going to share some things with you uh, on what God has been saying to me this week. And I think it's just groundbreaking revelation. It's groundbreaking. It's, it's, it's when the veil comes back. You just see, you see, you see yourself. You, you, you see yourself. You see your flaws, your weaknesses. You see your, your, your hang-ups. You see your... You see the things that can trip you up. You see the things you're trusting more than God. And I'm a firm believer, when you live a life expecting revelation, God doesn't give you a word to say to somebody else. God gives you a word for you to break the ceiling, for you to have the breakthrough, for you to have the freedom. That's what the, that's what the revelation is for. It's not for us to go tell somebody something. It's for us. So don't be surprised as you expect revelation. It comes full force in your life, for your life. Amen? Father, we thank you for the word. And Father, we magnify your name. We holler your name. We glorify your name. And Father, I pray for wisdom and revelation. And I declare that it flows freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I yield myself into your very capable hands. Therefore, speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. Not of me and all of you. And God, I decrease so that the word of God may increase into the ears of your precious people. And Father, I pray for every ear right now. I declare it's anointed to hear the word of God. Oh, God, we declare every heart is anointed to receive the word of God. It is good ground. The, the ground is broken up. The fallow ground is broken up. Holy Spirit, you have the liberty to move on every household, every ele electronic device. Have your way. Whisper a word, speak a word. We thank you, Lord, for the word of God. We thank you, Lord, for generations who will live for you. We thank you, Lord, for children who will live for you. We thank you, Lord, for spouses. We thank you, Lord, for grandchildren who will live for you. Father, we give you all the honor. Oh, Father, we give you all of the praise. And Father, we give you all of the glory. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> well, let's go ahead and hop into this word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. Whew. Well, we've been in a series um, <clears throat> that I think every believer needs, <laughs> uh, but they got to feel like they need it. They got to be they, they, they got to be in a posture to receive it and understand that as believers, uh, we're never left to our own devices. We're, never, we, we're not self-centered. We're not uh, self-driven. We're not that. We, are, we, we live by the Word of God. We, 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 we build our lives with the Word of God. We raise our families with the Word of God. And, and I'm going to give you some insight into what God, you, uh, well, the Holy Spirit just cautioned me on some things and and, 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 and when you're in tune to the Holy Spirit, when you're in tune to the Word of God, and you spend time with the living truth, listen, those same Holy Scriptures that were inspired by the Holy Spirit, written down by men, those same Scriptures are still alive today, and they will speak to you. They will remind you of the covenant. They will remind you of, 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 of the covenant that God has with us. They will remind you that you are royal priesthood. They will remind you, Derek, Hey, you're trusting yourself too much. And there's a, as you approach the Word of God, for a title today is part three, and we're talking about the, 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 the seed, the Word of God, the power of it, the, 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 the spiritual seed, the Word of God, what it does when it goes in us, and the power of it. And you got to have a readiness for this spiritual time. This is a holy interaction right now. We're not just watching TV. We're not just watching our phones. We're not just watching our iPads. This is a holy interaction right now. Why do you say that? Because the Word of God is coming forth. Not fabricated by men. The Holy Scriptures are going to come forth, and your spiritual ground is going to receive the truth, who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and a holy interaction takes place. Therefore, don't take it lightly. And here's one of the words I've got for you today. Sitting up under the Word of God, 
reading the Word of God, hearing the Word of God, is the most holiest interaction a believer can partake of. And I thought it was prayer. It's the most holiest interaction a believer can take part of. Why? Because the spirit of truth, the living truth, is coming forth. And it's not just coming forth in people who are not conducive to receive it, expand it, and bear fruit. It's coming forth to a born-again believer. You are a born-again believer. You are a spiritual being with a natural body. You are connected to God. You have a divine relationship with God. Therefore, when his holy scriptures are coming forth, it is one of the most holiest interactions that a believer can partake of. Sometimes you got to ask your spouse, read the word to me. Sometimes you got to sit your child down and say, listen, listen, I want you to sit down for five or ten minutes or two to three minutes. I want to read the word of God to you. Why? This interaction that I'm going to do with you, son or daughter, is the most holiest interaction. It even trumps you and I talking as mother and daughter, trumps you and I talking as father and son. It trumps you and I talking as father and daughter. This holy interaction, I'm going to read from the scriptures who you are in this world. I'm going to read it to you so that you will know that is a seed of the word of God. Now, what did God caution me on? God said, Derek, <laughs> he said, be careful that your words, your, 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 your natural wisdom is not trumping my spiritual wisdom out of your mouth into your wife, your children, and your church. Into your wife, your family, your children, and your church. And I said, okay, Lord, I, 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 I received that. I received that. He said, parables are okay to get the word of God across, to make it clear. He said, but don't fabricate wisdom that didn't come from above and try to replace the seed, the word of God, that's going to change people's lives. And that includes your wife, and that includes your, your, your son, and that includes your daughter, and that includes your church, and that includes you. Matter of fact, that includes you every time you open your mouth for counseling, giving somebody advice. You make sure that your natural wisdom is not trumping the seed, which is the word of God. You lead with the seed, which is the word of God, and then you can open up parables. Then you can open up wisdom. Then you can open up examples. But he cautioned me, and this morning I caution you, in this season, you can think you're following the Word of God, the Spirit of God, so on and so forth. And what you're doing is you're trusting yourself. Here's, here's another thing. You're trusting yourself too much. You're trusting yourself too much. I was in the backyard doing some work, and I said, okay, I got this, 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 this. And, and, and something said, all right, now you need to double check before you uh, walk out of the garage now. D double check and make sure you got everything before you walk out of the garage. Ah, man, I, I, I ain't <laughs> I got this. Got back there and started working. Man, I made three trips. I said, good God Almighty, I am just flat out irritated with this little plant. I'm sick and tired of it. I don't even want to plant it right now. I'm just, and, and the Holy Spirit said, ah, uh, you're trusting yourself too much. You're trusting yourself too much. He says, he says, same thing with the word of God. He said, listen, he said, Derek, anything that has your, your attention more than the word of God, you're trusting it too much. You're trusting it too much. And he said, I promise you, I promise you, it will let you down. He said, because, he said, the Holy Spirit said, he said, because when you drink of Jesus, you thirst no more. When you drink of something else too much, you're going to stay thirsty. And you, you know what? You know people who stay thirsty? They're working a lot. They're sweating. They're running. They're always on the go. All this stuff. And you're staying thirsty. And you say this right here. I'm just so exhausted. Well, the question is, are you exhausted because you gave something else more attention than you gave the seed, which is the word of God? Or are you exhausted because you trusted yourself uh, more than you trusted the seed, which is the word of God? That kind of exhaustion right there will lead to burnout. But when you put God first and not trust yourself too much, he said, you will thirst no more. There is no fatigue. As a matter of fact, you're on full go. I'm going to get some shirts that says on go mode. I'm on go mode with God. I'm on full go. And, and when I lay my head down, 
I lay my head down knowing I trusted God that day. I didn't trust myself more than I trusted God. I gave God time that day. I put the seed in me that day. And when you lay your head down, you need to know that you put the seed in you that day. And let me tell you something. When you put the word of God in you, the seed of God in you, for that day, in that morning, you will not be worn out. You will not be like me planting plants, trusting myself too much, back and forth to the garage, not trusting the Holy Spirit, saying, hey, you may want to check everything, make sure you got it. Now, I got this. But no, this is school season. And you're in school. Your kids are in school. Things have changed. It's a different ball game now. You're going to be thirsty if you're not trusting the Word of God, if you're not in the Word of God. Somebody say, well, how do you get in the Word of God? How do you even read the Word of God? How do you even study the Word of God? You ask God that. Because God said, you ask me, and I'll give it to you. You spend time with the Father. You say the Lord's Prayer every day. Start right there. And as you spend time with God, you will understand the Word of God, and the Word of God will get in you, and you can live your life as a spiritual being. But if we think that as believers... We're going to skip the seed, which is the word of God, and live this outstanding Zoe life? No. Here's what we'll do. We'll have a cop out. I don't understand that. You don't understand what? It's hard to understand anything. It's hard to understand anything if you don't have it in you. It's hard to understand anything if you don't spend time with it. So when people are sitting around talking about the word of God and this and that and, and how the Holy Spirit is this, 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 and he'll hold your mouth back and he'll lead you here and lead you there, and they're talking scriptures, man, if you're sitting there, you will be lost. Why? Because you're talking about somebody they spend time with that you don't. Why? Because you're trusting yourself too much. You're trusting yourself too much. It's a lot happening right now. Mentally, spiritually, emotionally. It's a lot happening in our households right now. It's a lot happening with our kids going to school. It's a lot happening with our kids standing home. Listen, even if your kids are standing home, you cannot leave your children to their own devices and 100% of the teacher's attention. You got to know something, too. I've seen a guy on Facebook say, hey, uh, if you didn't pass math in high school, you better take some serious YouTube lessons if your child is going to be at home with you. And don't just, and don't just say, okay, sarah, sarah, the teacher got it. No, 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 no. When, when, when our children are at home with us, we have a part. Well, I don't know that. Trust God to give it to you. Trust the seed of the word of God to give you understanding on history, to give you understanding on English, to give you understanding on math. But if you're not doing that, you're, 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 <laughs> you're trusting yourself too much. Trusting yourself how? You're trusting yourself that, hey, you got it, and, and, and they got it with you. No, no, you got to double down now. It's not easier when our children come home and go to school. It's more difficult. Why? You got to play a serious part now in their learning curve. You got to make sure that you're involved in their lives, and you can't be overwhelmed. You got to be charged up. You can't be thirsty. You got to be drinking of Jesus because Jesus will anoint you and give you the answers for your child. He will anoint you and give you the answers to, to, to explain to your child, hey, last year you was in middle school, this year you're in the ninth grade. Well, the teacher don't, listen, you don't know that teacher, she don't know you. You got to learn her, you got to learn her teaching style, she's got to learn you. So here, here, here it is, you got to trust God now. Everybody love you in middle school, now you got a new teacher. Why am I saying this? Because I know that parents, you're going into something and you got to be built up in the word of God, built up in the seed of God built up in the wisdom of God to make sure that you're not leaving your children to their own devices, that you're not trusting yourself too much. You're trusting the seed, which is the word of God. Now, in your notes, there's a readiness. There should be a readiness when we enter into this holy interaction to receive the word of God, to receive the seed of God. There should be a readiness all week this morning. You should have woke up with a readiness. Why? Because this is going to be a holy interaction. Me and the Spirit of God. Me and, Holy, me and the Holy Spirit. Me and the seed of God. Me and the Spirit of God. Me and the seed of God. Me and the Holy Spirit. That should be a readiness when you understand this is a holy interaction which is about to take place. And at any minute, the Word says, lest you see it with your eyes, hear it with your ears, and understand it with your heart, it says the Word of God, that seed, it will convert you. 
It will heal you. It will open your eyes. It will give you answers. There should be a readiness. I was at, I was at, <coughs> I was at a, uh, <coughs> well, me and my wife was at our spiritual son and daughter's house, just, 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 just hanging out, doing some work there. And, um, and, 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 and I, I think uh, I, her and my wife had, had went, they went, they're, they're going to work out and, and do their thing. And, 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 and we're out there doing our thing. I was doing my thing with, with the husband out there working so on and so forth. And, 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 and one of the daughters came to the door. And I said, uh, I said, hey, she said, hey, hey, Pastor Rain, how you doing? I said, hey, I'm, I, I'm doing okay. And, and, and I said, hey, you ready for school? And, and, and now, 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 listen to me now. This is four days before school even starts. Are, are you ready for school? I'm already packed, got my clothes laid out. And boy, that thing stuck with me for at least two, three days. Why did it stick with me? That was a readiness. And I said to myself, the teacher, the parents, nobody has to coach this young lady right here to learn. Why? She's approaching it with a readiness. I mean, she was ready. I mean, she didn't flinch. My stuff is packed. My stuff is laid out. I am ready. What, what, what was she saying? I, no one has to make me learn. No one has to make me posture myself to receive. No one has to do that. Why? She had a, a readiness about her. And this morning, I pray you have a readiness about you. This morning, I, I pray you have that same energy about, about. Now, she has a readiness about her with academics. How much more should we have a readiness about us when the Holy Scriptures are about to inspire us? Woo! Glory to God. Amen. Woo! Glory to God. So to start off in your notes, uh, you, I want you to ask, write this question down. Am I trusting myself too much? Am I trusting myself too much? What am I giving my attention to that supersedes my attention with God? Or exceeds my attention, uh, 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 attention with God? Am I trusting myself too much? See, God told me, he said, he said, listen, you're trusting yourself too much. Watch this now. He said, you're giving the church more attention than me. He said, if you want to be fruitless, if you want to be worn out, if you want to be tired, if you want to feel like you're straining in this church thing, give it more attention than the time you spend with me and watch what happens. Listen, I know what it means to be busy. I know what it means to be excited about doing something. I know what it means to be excited about doing something and the money is coming in. I know what it means to be excited about something and the A's are coming in and the B's are coming in and, and all the contracts are coming I know, I know what that is. I know that excitement. But let me tell you this. If you're giving that more attention than the time you're spending with God, you're going to continue to do this, sweat by your brow. And God told me, he said, if, he said, if you do that for a prolonged amount of time, you're going to feel depleted. Even doing work in my house, you're going to feel depleted. I said, are you serious? Even preaching in the pulpit, you're going to feel depleted if you are giving that church more attention than the time you spend with me. You're going to feel depleted. And he just went down the line. You give your wife more attention, more weight than you give me in the Word of God. You, you, you're gonna feel, you're just gonna feel confused. You're gonna feel, you're gonna feel depleted. You give your kids more attention than you give the seed in the Word of God. You, you, you're gonna feel. You, he said you can't do it. This holier interaction, whether it's in the pulpit, in the pew, at home, reading the Word, hearing the Word, saying it out loud. Listen, that interaction exceeds everything else. It exceeds everything else. So I want to encourage you. Listen, am I giving this thing too much attention? Am I more, and, and here's what, and here's, here, here was the last thing the Holy Spirit whispered to me. He said, if you keep doing it, it's going to let you down. 
and you're going to feel like, you know, you're, you're not called. And, 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 and Z, let's go over here and, and start this and do this. We, we know we can do this, and we know we can do that. We, we know we can invest. We, we, we know we can do that. And you're going to start saying stuff like that. Why? Because you're going you're gonna to play hopscotch now. Ah, this is not what God called us to do. It is what God called you to do. You just start giving it more attention than you gave the one who gave you the vision to start it. You gave it more attention than the seed, which is the word of God, than you, 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 you gave it too much attention. And the seed, which is the word of God, fell by the wayside. It's hard to live a holy life. It's hard to live a thriving life without the seed, the word of God being first. <clears throat> I want you to think about this. Building our lives or building your life, raising our kids, building our marriages, uh, living for eternal life, building our lives, raising our kids, uh, 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 conducting ourselves in marriages and, 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 and marriage and, 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 and looking forward to eternal life and the, the, the principles that surround the eternal life. Uh, uh, that was promised to us. Building our entire lives around these principles that surround you're going to have eternal life. Build it around Jesus of Nazareth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Building it around that, watch this now, and not spending time with it. I don't do this in my marriage because, of this, because, because I'm a believer. So, 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 okay, all right, that's good. I raised my kids a certain way because, oh, okay, that's cool. You know, I, 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 I fought through my marriage for two years. I almost walked away, but it was like, it was like pulling teeth. I fought through it with the word of God. So I, I almost walked away. I thought it was going to be two years. I thought it was going to be three years. For five years, I didn't know if I wanted my husband. I didn't know if I wanted my wife. She didn't know it. He didn't know it. I fought through it because the word of God carried me. Huh. You're building your whole life around a concept and you don't spend any time with the author of it. That is religion. That is hollow. That is not of God. I give to God because I'm generous. I, I, I raise my kids. I don't curse. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. This, 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 this. I love my neighbor. I pick up my cross. I walk in love. I do all this stuff. Da, da, da. If you're not careful, it's just a mechanical thing you're doing. It's, it's checked off the agenda today. Why? Why in the world would I build my life around Jesus of Nazareth who died for us to be saved and not spend time with the author of all of that stuff? Why? I'll tell you why. <clears throat> because mere exposure to God's word in today's world has lost its value. Mere exposure to God's word in today's world has lost its value. We wait for church to interact with God. We wait for prayer calls to interact with God. We wait for presiding to give to God. We wait for the choir to uh, 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 lead us in praise and lift our hands. We wait for the pastor to open the Bible. And, and some of us this week for the first time, it's our first time even seeing the word of God. What does that mean? I trusted myself too much. I gave too much attention to something else. And I show up today and I check this off my agenda. And guess what? Next week, you're going to be tired and frustrated again. You're going to repeat the process. It's a cyclical way. It's a cyclical system that sets into the believer who doesn't place value on the word of God. Like that young lady going to school who is not ready for this holy interaction every single day, seven days a week. They have a readiness to spend time with God. Why? Because the choir hurts in their heart. The job, the school, the academics, the husband, the wife, the children, they couldn't solve it. But the word of God is saying, come to me. Matthew 11, come to me, all of you who are heavy laden. And see won't this word, see won't I give you some rest. Amen? John 14. Let's go. Got a couple minutes here. John 14. We're going we're to allow the inspired word of God to speak to us. <clears throat> the inspired word of God to speak to us. The seed of the word of God to speak to us. In your notes, I want you to write this down. I want you to write this down. This is the true reality. What we're about to read is a true reality. What we're about to read is a true reality. And get this ready for me. 
in the, uh, Passion, in the Passion Translations too. John 14, uh, verse 6, hallelujah, glory to God. I feel the Holy Spirit, the anointing is in this place. The anointing is on your device. The anointing is in your house right now. Woo, man alive, miracles, oh boy, answers are coming to you right now. Weights, chains are falling off of you right now. Woo, that word is opening you up right now. It's not making you ashamed. That's the spirit of truth coming to you right now. And the spirit of truth is revealing something to you, not about nobody else, about yourself. And you're saying to yourself, I have got to spend time with my father. I have got to stop trusting myself. He's talking to me. I'm the one burnt out. I'm the one tired. I'm the one snippy snappy. I'm the one who can barely get out to bed. I'm the one who can barely think. I'm the one who has bought into that I'm just so tired I can't spend time with God. He's talking to me. So, of course, verse 5, Thomas is, is, is being smart, at, you, you know, show me this and show me that. But verse 6, Jesus said unto him, listen, since you're doubting so much, he says, listen, I'm the way. I'm the truth and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Listen, there's no other toll roads to the Father except through Jesus. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the light, and there's the only way to get to him is through me. You got to settle that true reality. Passage translation. Jesus explained, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes, watch this, there's, there's a higher goal than going to heaven. There's a higher goal than going to heaven. What's the higher goal? To sit next to the Father. No one comes next to the Father. Except through union with me. Woo, glory to God. There's a higher goal than just going to heaven. He says, I'm the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And the goal is coming through me. You're going to sit right down next to the Father. Jesus says, I have a goal in mind. Not just to get you to heaven. I didn't die for that. I died for this seed, which is the word of God. John 1.1 1, 1. John 1, 1 showed us what, what, what the word is. He says, there's a higher goal to sit next to the Father. And watch this, be in union with him. Now, I don't want to get up there, sit next to the Father, and, 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 and have the quiet disease. Because I don't even know how to interact with him. Because I didn't spend no time with him while I was on the doggone earth. And he looks at me and says, Derek, why are you so doggone quiet, buddy? Well, I, I don't want to say the wrong thing. Wrong thing? You can't say the wrong thing up here. I, I, I don't want to aggravate you. I don't want to speak out of turn. You can't speak out of turn up here. Well, I just, you know, I, I feel like, you know, you, 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 you just, this, this deity, you, you just, you, you just, this big divine God, I don't know if I'm going to say it right. Just, just, just talk to me. Why? You're in union with me. You was in union with my son. You're in union with me. His goal, when, when he died for your sins, the goal was not for you just to get to heaven, but for you to come sit next to me. And if you sit next to anybody and don't say one or two words, they're going to think you're weird. Come over here and sit next to me. And son goes, uh, Fortnite is, uh, <laughs> I'm on level 55, I, I, I got to, why? You ain't saying nothing, ain't nobody saying nothing. Son, you ain't got nothing to say to me? Nah, I ain't got, you ain't got nothing to say to your daddy? Nothing? No. Nah. You're going to think, my gosh, where is our relationship outside of daddy, I need this, daddy, I need that? He says, you got to be in union with me. And you know, when we spend time in the word of God, when the seed, which is the word of God, we spend time and that seed is going in us, we're grounds, we're spiritual ground. Listen, here's what happens. We become in union with Jesus of Nazareth. As we become in union with him, he says, listen, when you give your life to Christ, when you give your life to Christ, when you become born again, he says, listen, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life, and nobody gets to the Father except through me. And my goal is for you to sit next to him. That's how powerful the seed, which is the word of God, is. The seed, which is the word of God. Get that for me. Get, can you get that for me in the Amplified? And while they're getting that in the Amplified, I want you to hear this. The word of God wants to be the ruler of our hearts. The word of God wants to be the ruler of our hearts. The seed, which is the word of God, it wants to be the ruler of our hearts. Remember, it's the most holiest interaction we can partake of as believers. What's that? It's to put this word before our eyes and put it in our ears. This is inspired by God right here. 
This is the living truth right here. It's the most powerful interaction we can partake of as believers. And here's what the devil does. The devil, the devil would get us busy and have us thinking we're doing something for God, all while neglecting his seed, his word. I'm doing this for God. I'm blessing people's lives. And people are doing this. And people, and people, and God is like, I'm the only boss that, that, that would allow you to keep working and fire you. And you not even know it. Why? Because I'm a jealous God. And you're giving that thing more time than you're giving me. And guess what? It's going to wear you out. It's going to let you down. Somebody says, oh, you're speaking doom and gloom. I'm not speaking doom and gloom because when you're spending time with God, and the thing goes south, guess what you say? Oh, God, you got something better for me. But when you're not spending time with God and the things go south, you start rambling around trying to find something else again. And, boy, you are devastated. You're, de- you're, 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 you're devastated that that thing you spent more time with than you did with God, it lets you down. The Amplified. Jesus said unto him, him who Thomas, I am the only way to God. And the real truth and the real life No one comes to the Father but through me. Listen, fancy words, fabricated speeches that don't bring nobody out of their seat and come down to this altar and give their life to Christ. It it doesn't. What does it? The Holy Scriptures does that. That seed, which is the Word of God, that seed going into that ground, that seed going into that ground. Listen, he says, I make it the the, the rain, it rains on the just and the unjust. I, I, I implanted it in men's hearts. They, they know me. Well, they haven't confessed yet. Trust me. They know me. And all it takes is for the word of God to go forth and the ground to have some readiness. They didn't want to come to church, but they can sit in that chair and their hearts and the ground which I created in my image, in my likeness, when that word comes forth and that ground is not hard and they're open to receive, they'll get out of the chairs and they'll come forth and they will give their life to me. That's how powerful the seed, which is the word of God, is. And you know, religious talks, religious talks that does not spring from the seed of God's word, watch this, is a dim abstraction of an unreal emotionalism. Religious talks that does not spring from the seed of God's word is a dim abstraction. It's, it's, not even, it's not even clear. It just tickles people's emotions. It's a dim abstraction of unreal emotionalism. What is that? Emotional Christianity comes out when we bypass the word and get people riled up. We get them riled up, running around, shouting, wigs flying off, uh, everything just, just going crazy. And it's like, did anybody open the word up? Did anybody mention Jesus Christ? Did anybody point me to the Father? Did anybody point me to the one who created me? Did anybody do that? No, didn't didn't nobody do that. Well, guess what happens? You you had an emotional experience. It's a dim abstraction, but, but it was fabricated of men. No power on that. The only power you have with that is for 45 minutes of running around, and they walk right out of that door still depressed. They walk right out of that door still mean. They walk right out of that door still fooling around on their spouse. They walk right out of that door and, 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 and leaning heavy on the medication. Why? You didn't preach the word of God to them. You didn't preach the seed of the word of God to them. You trusted yourself too much in the pulpit, and guess what? I've done that, and God calls me and says, hey, 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 put the seed, which is the word of God, which is me, in them. That's going to bear witness with their spirit. That's going to deliver them. That's going to, that's going to infuse them with power. That's going to give them the go. That's going to have them in the go mode to live this life. That's really going to give them the Zoe life that you talk about. But if you exclude me from your Sunday services, I promise you, they have an emotional experience. And five years later, they don't even understand why they're getting divorced. They don't even understand it. I, I, <laughs> I said, God, with my he said, you got a role, they got a part. They got a, their branch, I'm divine. They got to spend time with me, they have to do it. He said, but make sure you do your part. Pay attention to yourself and the doctrine that you preach. Pay attention to it. Why? Because you want to make sure that the seed, which is the word of God, is going forth. I can tell you the amount of times that when you're raising children in, 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 in the word of God, when they say something out of pocket, especially when they become young adults and they want to say something out of pocket, it's like, uh, you shouldn't say that. Your mouth is out of line. I'm afraid they're going to. 
I ain't afraid of nothing. Your mouth is out of line. You shouldn't say that. Matter of fact, you don't even understand what you're saying. Matter of fact, you, 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 you're stepping across the line that you have no business going. Why? Because, because when the seed, which is the word of God, is the final authority in your house, in your parentalness, let me tell you something. It should rise up. Why? Because if it doesn't rise up, here's what's going to rise up. Cuss out. Here's what's going to rise up because I told you so. That's why. Here's what's going to up, rise up. Loud discussions in the back room, in the kitchen, and the kids scatter like, oh, 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 boy. Everybody quiet in the house. Why? Because nobody is adhering to the seed, which is the word of God. Nobody is pulling on the seed that was put in them. Sometimes you got to walk away and say, Lord, you got to show me this. Because if I open my mouth with mere women, uh, uh, words of men, I'm going to say the wrong thing. Somebody's feelings are going to get hurt. Why? Because you're dipping down, you're dipping down into your database and all you can grab is you. Why? Because you, you, didn't, you didn't have a readiness like that young lady to receive that word in that whole interaction. But when you receive that word, when you spend time with God and people are pushing your buttons and the job is getting tight and the stress and the deadlines are all over you and the kids got homework and you got to cook and you got to take care of your wife and you got to take care of your husband and you got to take care of your grandkids and you got to make sure the house is going and you got to balance the checkbook. Man, a lot. And you got to take care of yourself. When you got that seed down in you, that word down in you and that, those walls are trying to cave in on you, you when you dip down, here's what you're going to grab. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. You will never thirst again as long as you drink of me. And when you grab him, you go, man alive, I can take another day on. Man alive, I can finish this day strong. <laughs> and, and, and as a wife, you don't have the bonnet on your head at, at 7 o'clock in your high water pajamas and, and you're already in tomorrow, and your husband want to have some happy time, but he already figured out. She's already ramped up. She's on the runway to go to sleep, buddy. It, it's all over. And then when you go to approach her, or, or you go to approach him, you go to approach her or him, it's like, I, I'm just, oh, I, I'm just so exhausted. I don't, I don't even know my name right now. It's like, you need to know your name. Why? You done gave something too much attention for this day. You should have spent some time with God, because I be doggone if you're going to go 10 hours in the day, giving the job attention, the kids attention, then when it comes to your one flesh body, at night, oh, I'm just so tired, I'm just, I'm just so worn out. Please, please oh God, I've, oh, and, and, and then, and, and then here, and, and, and if your kids in anything, just, just, just tell them, put your hands over your ears. And, and here, and, 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 and you result to this. Well, come on in, let's just get it over. Man, I don't know, man, he don't want to. Just come on, let's get it over. You know, you know, my, my, my gosh, I'm the last doggone thing on the totem pole. Listen, you got you to gotta dip down in that word. You got to dip down in that word. Spray you a little, little, little peach blossom on or something. And say, so, man, I got to engage this man. Lord, I need you right now. I got to take care of him. I got to take care of her. I need you right now. But, don't, but you can't, you can't say, I just... just Treat them like leftovers. Just, just get it over with. Just come on. It's like, man, man, a soldier, he was at ease. I mean, he's, he's at attention, but he's at ease now. <laughs> Religious talks that, that does not spring from the seed of God's word is a dim distraction of an unreal emotionalism. Listen to me. It is aimless when we don't preach the seed, which is the word of God. We don't plant it when we don't plant it in people. It's aimless and it's powerless. But we don't plant it in people. The continual plowing and harrowing of a field, which is a man's heart or a woman's heart, without putting any seed into it, does not yield harvest. What happened? Man, they broke up the fallow ground all week. They came with a readiness. And we give speeches fabricated from us. So they plowed. A continual plowing and harrowing all week, raising the baby, spending time with God, fixing the meals and, 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 and taking the kids to school and homeschooling the kids, virtual schooling the kids, all this kind of stuff. And, and they've done that and they show up on Sunday and no seed, no word, no holy inscription inspired by God is said to them, is read to them. Guess what? It, it's, it's, it's no, no, I owe them more than that. And every single week I try to come out here and point you to God. 
I share with you what, what God is saying. And we look in the word ourselves and we see the word of God and what it says about us. Amen. And you know, when it is said that we are born again of incorruptible seed, this seed, this seed, <clears throat> which is of God, incorruptible seed of the word of God that lives and endures forever, it is not meant to be implied that God, that, that the word of God is itself, listen to me, catch this now, is itself the begetting principle. Mm. It is only the mode in which the principle works. In other words, the vehicle by which the mysterious, enormous power and body in it operates. I'm under the word of God. I'm, 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 I'm the, the, the word of God. The word of, um, the, the word of God. The, the word of God says, the, 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 the word of God. You, 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 you got to include seed in that. It's not just that. There's something, there's something inside the word of God. There's something inside of it that has enormous power. There's another component to it. What's that component? It's seed. And when it's planted, it yields God-like harvest. It has, it has, the, 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 it is not meant to be implied that the word of God is itself the begetting principle. It is only the mode in which the principle works. The vehicle by which the mysteriousness, Jesus, listen, unto them, they don't know what I'm talking about, but unto you guys, disciples, you should know the mysteries of it. The mysteries of what? What are you talking about? You just went out there and talked. Yeah, but, but, but you should know the mysteries of it. The mysterious, enormous power embodied in this thing called the Word of God, which is a seed when you put it in people, how that operates. It changes us from the inside out. You know, you, you got to be honest with yourself. It's okay to be honest with yourself. And, and scrutinize yourself and scrutinize ourselves. I scrutinize myself. My wife scrutinized. You got to be honest. Sometimes I say to myself, boy, without God, this thing right here would have been over. What thing? With you and your wife, without the seed of the word of God, harnessing your mouth, harnessing your actions, redirecting your beliefs back to him, redirecting your questions back to him. Without that, this thing would have been over with. Why? I don't trust in myself 100%. And when you trust yourself 100%, I guarantee you stuff's going to fall all over the place. It's going to fall all over the place. That's how you talk to yourself. I know you do. Your husband says something to you, you walk off, you say, what? <laughs> yeah, honey, uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. Guess what? Your heart was so hard while he was talking, you just wanted him to think you was listening to him. You don't want to listen to him. You, you, you don't. And you say to yourself, my God. Boy, I tell you, boy, if it wasn't for his word, like, I'll tell you what I could do. I ain't got to answer to nobody. I want to spend 20, I spend it. I want to vacate, I vacate. I want to buy a purse, I buy a purse. Shoot, man. Listen, the only thing that keeps you from carrying those things out is the seed, which is that word of God. Your relationship with God. That's how powerful it is. It harnesses. It pulls back. Because every man is drawn away, James says, by things that's inside of him. You're not tempted by these people out here. It's something in here that the word of God has to deal with, and it can. But guess what? If it was not for that, some of us would not be the people we are today. All of us. It's just no way. It's just no way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's go to 1 Peter real quick. 1 Peter. Man, I've been trying to get here. Lord have mercy. Glory to God, the word of God, the seed of God. Media, I need this ready for me in the amp, the, tran, the, the passion, and the message. First Peter. <clears throat> First Peter 1. Now, you got to know that when the word of God is coming forth, the one who wants to steal your attention is not your two-year-old. It's Mr. Slewfoot. He, he, he knows this is a holy interaction. This is the highest interaction that they can have. He'll do everything he can to distract you. He'll make you fall asleep. He'll make you jump over on social media. They can't help you. 
he'll make you, he'll have you, he'll have you checking your, your food on the stove, and he'll, he'll make you think, I want food when I, when I finish. But if your food distracts you from the seed of the word of God going in you, he's like, yeah, that makes sense. Perfect, perfect time management. Do that. And it's like, no, 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 you, you, don't need, to, you, you need to cook that food at 6 o'clock. But please don't put it on at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock and be back and forth. It's like, oh, oh, I can hear it. And he's like, I don't know about that. You don't have a readiness to hear it. You're distracted by other things. You're like Martha. You're careful for many things. But Mary has chosen. Chosen what? To be ready to receive at the feet of Jesus. First Peter, I want to inspire you to live as a spiritual being. I want to inspire you to posture yourself to receive this seed with all it has for you. Amen? First Peter, uh, chapter 1, verse 23. Glory to God. Oh. Oh. Verse 22. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit of God, unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Verse 23. Being born again, watch this now, not of the corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible seed. What is, what is the, we're talking about the seed, the, the power of the seed, the, the, the spiritual seed, the word of God. What is the incorruptible seed? But of the incorruptible seed, well, how did that happen? By the word of God. But of the incorruptible seed, by the word of God, which lives and abideth forever. Now watch this in the Amplified. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Since your obedience to the truth, you have purified yourselves for sincere love of the believers. See that you love one another from the heart, always unselfishly seeking the best for one another. Watch this. For you have been born again, that is, reborn from above. Watch this now. Spiritually transformed. Remember, don't trust yourself. You're trusting yourself too much. Live like a spiritual being. Spiritually transformed. Watch this. Renewed is what this incorruptible seed does. And set apart, why? For his purpose, not of seed, which is perishable. Busy, 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 getting worn out. But from that which is imperishable, watch this, and immortal, that is through the living, watch this, and the everlasting word of God. Let's keep another, next translation. Whoo, glory to God. For all flesh. Go back. Yeah. So express this sincere love towards one another passionately with, with a pure heart. Next verse. For through the eternal and the living. See, this word is alive. <laughs> Whatever's dead in us, this word is alive. It goes in like a two-edged sword. And what it does, it deals with us. It delivers us. It goes in and it cuts into the divine and sunder and it says, I know you was like this as a child. I know this happened in your last marriage. I know this happened, you know, uh, on your last job. I know you got hurt over here. But he says, listen, this is the living word of God going forth. Have a readiness about yourself. This is, this is the truth, the spiritual truth, the living truth, not the world truth, not the corruptible seed, but the incorruptible seed, which is the word of God. And it's the living word of God. And you've been born again. And this, watch this, and this seed... I just thought we were just talking about, and this seed, what seed? The word of God. <laughs> the word of God. Sometimes when you're going through life, when you don't know the answers, you got to open that word up and you got to go to this seed, the incorruptible seed, and say, Lord, show me me in this. Lord, I need another way. Lord, I need the words to say to my daughter. I need the words to say to my son. I'm parenting out of fear. That's not going to hold him. That's not going to hold her. I've come to that realization. I want to put the seed, which is the living word of God, in them in this situation. Watch this. And this seed that he planted within you. Mmm. Mmm. Seed, ground, plant, it ain't important. And this seed that he planted within you. God. God orchestrated seed time, harvest time. God believed 
that we could be incorruptible. God believed that if you put this in them, you got to plant it. You got to plant this seed. God believes in the seed and the planting process. He planted within you. Watch this. The seed that he planted can never, watch this. Next verse. Can never be destroyed. Watch this. But will live and grow inside of you forever. Glory to God. And you know, write this down. There's a foreverness to the seed, which is the word of God in me. There's a foreverness to the seed, which is the word of God that's in me. There's a foreverness to it. It's not going to fall off. Sweetheart, you're 10 years old right now, and as, as bad as mama want to go off on the teachers, I don't want to teach you that. I don't want to teach you to address every situation with thinking that you can't be wrong, thinking that you don't need to go higher, thinking you don't need to raise your leadership skills. I don't want to parent you like that. I'm going to give you the seed, which is the word of God. Listen, the word says this right here. Listen, be nice to the masters or the, or, or the employers or the principal or the, even, even the fraud one, even the difficult one, sweetheart. The word says, be nice to them. Why would I do this? Because there's an aboveness to us. We're spiritual beings. We should be able to rise above the pettiness in our schools, in our classrooms, with your friends, so on and so forth. But I'm not going to raise you to think it's, it, it couldn't be you. Because I'm setting you up to fail. I'm going to put the word of God in you. Now, what could you have said different? What could you have done different? But a lot of times your mother skills will kick in. And what you do is, well, here's what happens. You stunt their growth. I was talking to a guy, this, this, he said, well, this, 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 this. And sometimes people don't like this and don't like us and don't like this, so on and so forth. I said, don't give me that. If you're going to be a leader, be a leader. And anytime you're a leader, everybody don't like you. So, 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 so stop pointing out to me what, 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 what people don't like, how they respond, all this kind of stuff. And start, I, I want to hear it come out of your mouth. I'm going higher. I'm going higher. <laughs> I'm raising my altitude. And you're going to do that with the seed, which is the word of God. But if your first default is, well, just look at them. I mean, I mean, my pastor told me one time, Derek, I'm telling you for the 10th time, you keep trying to explain yourself. And he would say this to me. He, he, we were sitting around the elders' table, and he would say, does anybody understand what I'm saying? Why everybody is thinking down here, defending themselves, and, 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 and pointing the finger, and pointing the blame. Does anybody understand what I'm saying to him? Does anybody understand that? And what he was saying was, Derek, look at the fruit of the situation, and if you do that, you're going to rise higher. But I couldn't do it with my natural eyes. Because your natural being wants to defend and blame and defer and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, I know that he or she may be difficult. I know that the situation was difficult. But you, Derek, in this position... You're not going to defer to that. You're not going to defer to that. I expect you to be higher. Remember the member? They may get into it. But at this level, it's not going to work like that. He said, look, the fruit of your situation, the fruit of your interaction, this is it. And if you stay right here, Derek, you're going to grow from it. But I couldn't stay in my natural thinking. I had to go to the word of God and say, you know what? He's absolutely right. I did my best, but it wasn't enough. Guess what? I got sharper. You got to be the same way as a parent. Same way as a spouse, same way as a businessman. You can't be, a, listen, calling yourself walking in peace in your marriage and you're afraid to confront, that's not peace. Hey, what you said hurt. My wife would tell me, what you, what you just said right there hurt. My wife would tell me, bring it down, bring it down. Bring it down now. And I'll tell you, my word to her is, easy now. Her word to me is, hey, it's not that serious. Her word to me sometimes, hey, it's not a kingdom issue now. And we'll catch us. She said, hey, I can say that better. Let, 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 let me back up. I can say, what is that? She's dick. She's, you know what? I, 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 I kind of kicked and clawed and all this kind of stuff and just acting like a little baby over this thing. And I can say this. To, I say this about, I kind of kicked and clawed because I wanted this, acting like a little baby over this thing. But that, that, that was, I don't want it. I'll act like a little baby. Look, 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 look. I want to repent to you for that. What is that? I'm dipping down in my spiritual seed database. And that response right there is going to give a response that indicates this man is under the word of God. Do you know how many times Christian couples throw out, I want a divorce? Where did that come from? Where did that come from? Man, I love it. I remember me and my wife, when we first got married, uh, we, we, we were just flinging out there. Boop, 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 boop. She finally told me, she said, look, hey, I looked at my family. I figured, hey, if you're not happy, get out of it. That's what I grew up in, Derek. I said, well, you're, you're kind of right. You know, I, if you're not happy, get out of it. That's what I seen. Just you get out of it. But boy, when we got a revelation of the word of God, we receive the seed, which is the word of God, and begin to understand covenant, 
I can promise you in the last 20 years, no, 16, 23, in the last 17 years, we've never uttered that word. What, what? We did utter that word. We uttered that word, divorce, when we started this church. Are you serious? Are you serious, you guys uttered it? Yeah, because we was on a retreat trying to do this thing in the natural, not seeking God, excited about the thing, and excited about what God has showed us in the Bahamas about this church, excited about what's happening, the transition, all this kind of stuff, not realizing, uh, go away for five days and spend some time with me. But we're up there under pressure and all kind of cracks is coming open, this and that. I don't know. I know you when you commit to something, I'm going to be second fiddle. You're going to go all out. You're going to work tirelessly. And it's the same thing is going to happen to happen in Atlanta. I know you. I know you. I know. And I don't think I want to. It's like, oh, my God, where is this coming from? Listen, the fiery darts will come at you. But if you got on your shield of faith and your, 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 your armor, your spiritual armor, which came from the seed, which is the word of God, it just bounces off. But when you don't have that on you know what you say? Maybe we need to go ahead and do that. Maybe we should go ahead and, and do that. Boy, I came out of that just like I came out of the first time we uttered the words divorce, six years and not marriage. I came out of that saying this, saying this to myself. I said this to myself. My wife will not take me not being a 100% authentic man of God. She ain't going to do it. I said, I ain't going to play around with her feelings. I ain't going to play around with her heart. I ain't going to play around with this church thing. I ain't going to play around at all. I'm not going to manipulate. I'm not going to do that. And guess what? Vice versa. I don't have the corner market on her heart. She doesn't have the corner market on my heart. God has the corner market on our hearts, and that provokes us to love one another. What does that mean? We treat one another like we're spiritual beings, like we're talking to God because he's in us. Message translation. <sighs> A life conceived by, a life conceived by, conceived by God is there. That's why the prophet said, the old life is grass life. <laughs> it's beauty as short-lived as wildflowers. Grass dries up. Flowers droop. God's word goes on and on forever. Is that it? That is the word that conceived the new life. In you, God's word. That word goes on and on forever. But guess what? It was the word of God when you confess Romans 10, 9 through 10. It was the word of God, the seed of God, that you had to say with your mouth. Okay, what do we Okay, that you had to say with your mouth. You had to say it out of your mouth. And what does it say? Confess it out of your mouth. That's the first thing you got to do. Confess what? This incorruptible seed. Confess it out of your mouth. There? Okay, I did that. Okay, believe it in your heart. B -b -b believe it in my heart? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you confessed out of your mouth was seed that went into some ground. Now believe it. And it says, you are born again. You are born again. Confess it. Believe it. Here's what I need to believe, that Jesus died and rose from the dead in three days. Okay, I, I believe all that. You are now born again. Born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed. How did that happen? Look at the process. I had to say it out of my mouth. I had to hear it and believe it in my heart, which is the ground. That seed was in there, and I had to believe something. What? Jesus died and rose from the dead in three days. And then when I believed that, I was born again, and you were born again. The seed process got you born again. The seed process got me born again. We can't be born again believers and abort the very thing that brought us into the kingdom. It's going to be hard to conduct yourself in a kingdom when you don't understand the very thing that you spoke and believed brought you into this kingdom. You can't abort it. You got to keep spending time with it. With what? The seed, which is the word of God, to learn how to navigate this thing. To know that you are a spiritual being. To know that you can lay hands on a depressed child. To know that you can discern. No, 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 no. Something's going on behind this. No, 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 no. Something's going on here. No, 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 no. I'm buying the spirit of suicide, right? Suicide? What, what are you? No, 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 no. You're a spiritual being, mom. You're a spiritual being, Dad. You're a spiritual being, young man, young lady. Listen, listen. Thank God for motivational books. Thank, thank, thank God for books written by Christians. Thank, thank, thank God for that. But I promise you this. Most of the time, if we get honest with ourselves, if we're reading a relationship book, the relationship book is designed for us to get. It, it excites us that we can get. Get what? A wife. Get what? A husband. All this. And you can take all the principles you want from a book, which is an assistance 
to the seed, which is the word of God. And that book and those principles will help you get a husband, but only the spirit of God will help you keep him. Only the word of God and the seed of God will help you keep him. Why? Because your excitement to get overrode something. Your excitement to read the relationship book, uh, men, men are from Mars, women are from Venus, your excitement to read that, to share that, to forward that, all that kind of stuff, you had it misplaced. My God, you never shared the word of God like you're sharing that. My God, you've never been so excited about the word of God like you're excited about this book. What in the world are you thinking about? Well, it's just so powerful. Look at the testimonies. Thank God for the testimonies, but I promise you this, you're giving it too much attention if you're spending more time with it than you are spending in this word because this word is going to live in you forever. This book, guess what? Two years, two years later, she may change her mind on that concept. She may come back and say, I was wrong about marriage. I was wrong about being single. That was wrong. Why? And not that she wouldn't hear from God. It's just revelation after revelation keeps coming. And guess what? You can't, you can't put your pivot foot on those natural things. Why? Because they're temporary. They're fleeting. But the word of God, the woman who spends time in that word, and that seed is going in, and it's going in, and she don't have 10 steps to this and 20 steps to this. She don't have that. She, she, she's, not, she's not excited about all this kind of stuff. She's just spending time with God, time with him, the Holy Spirit, and the seed, which is the word of God, is going in her. And guess what? She's believing God not for a book connoisseur husband that reads 10, 25 relationship books and no word. She's believing God for the same kind of mate that's spending time with the Father, that, that's allowing the seed to come in, that has a readiness about himself to receive the word of God. She's spending time, and guess what God does? Guess what God does? God does the great convergence. He brings them together. Boom! <laughs> I said, my God, look at this. Why? Two born-again, Bible-believing, seed-carrying, Word of God-believing people just came together. Watch the foreverness of that relationship. Why? That book ain't going to keep you from going off. Well, the book says, you know, say to yourself ten times, I'm not going to say that, 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 I'm not going to say that. That's what the book says. And then when you get married, you're going to be saying it ten times every day. And realize this ain't going nowhere fast, and you'll be miserable. Don't get me wrong. I read books. I do this. But I don't give books more attention than I give the seed, which is the word of God. I don't want my daughter giving books more attention than the seed, which is the word of God. I don't want my son giving books, podcasts, motivational podcasts, all this kind of more attention than they're giving the seed, which is the word of God. I want those things to be supplement. But the foundation is, man, they spend time with God. They spend time with God because they know the only way their parents are together for 23 plus years is because our parents spend time with God. Our parents believe in the seed, which is the word of God. Our parents have individual relationships with God. Not just one. Both of them have relationships with God. They believe in that seed. That's, 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 That's the only way. Two minds can occupy one space for that long. (laughs) Oh, boy. Oh, gosh. And I I struck a nerve. There was somebody. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians. I felt it in your TV. Let me give you thought number one while we do that. 1 Thessalonians 2. Uh, We're going to read that in the uh, King James and the Message. But let, let, let me give you this first thought. As powerful as preaching can be, as powerful as preaching can be, it doesn't cause you to grow. It points you to the source of growth. As powerful as preaching can be, it doesn't cause you to grow. It points you to the source of growth. It doesn't cause you to grow. It points you to the source of growth. I was scrolling through Facebook about two years ago, and the guy was doing morning prayer, and he was praying. And I'm talking about he was just wide open, I, I, just, just screaming, hollering, white stuff in the corner of his lips, and this, eyes closed, I, I'm going live, all this kind of stuff. I'm like, what are you saying? Boy, it sounds, the, the, the voice is raised, and the, the emotions, and, and people are throwing their hearts up. And all, but I'm like, okay, what are you saying? You, 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 what are you saying? You, you, you're praying for grapes to be in your refrigerator and... And, 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 and money to be on your mattress when you don't expect it. But you're not praying the word of God. 
I'm lost here. I said, shoot, let me, let me keep going. Bless his heart, open his eyes, God. I'm not trying to be a, a high and mighty, but brother, I got to have some understanding if I'm going to act on it. As powerful as that can be, it's not going to cause nobody to grow into prayer. It's just not going to do it. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So as powerful as preaching can be, it does not cause us to grow. It points us to the source of growth. Next thought. <clears throat> According to the word of God, we can prolong true deliverance when we constantly place our words, natural man, natural wisdom, natural wisdom, natural mere words of men, when we place our words before the seed of God's word in people's lives. That's why a counseling session should only last 45 minutes. 45 minutes with everything I got going on. Brother, I'm, we're going to read these five scriptures. We're going to pray, and, 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 and we're going to believe God to open your heart, open her heart. I don't need to talk about no principles and, and going on vacation and, and going out to the Riverside Park and laying a blanket on the ground. Man, y'all talking about divorce. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna read these scriptures, and we're going to receive these scriptures. We're going to pray, and we're going to receive the prayer. And I'm going to give you a little, little bit of advice. She's going to give you a little bit of advice. We're going to share a little bit about how we overcame and, and, and how we got to where we are today. That's going to be it. I'm not going to be in here with you for three hours, though. Why? If I stay in here with you for three hours, all of a sudden, my words replace God's word. And guess what? I'm going to talk to you for three hours, and in 72 hours, you're going to send us another email saying, hey, she decided to leave me anyway. Oh, <laughs> Why? We place too much emphasis in that session on men's mere words. And nobody, nobody, nobody brought the seed into the conversation. So we can prolong true deliverance when we constantly place our words before the seed of God's word in people's lives. And though in people's lives includes our children. It includes our children. Listen, I can give motivational speeches to them. I can encourage them. I can inspire them. But I, I, I promise you this. Hey, now, now, here's what the word says about that. Now, you're going to have to deal with this. This is, this is something you got to deal with. And the Word can help you do that. You got to ask God. He, he can lead you and guide you. You got to talk to Him at night. Pray to Him. He can show you. James, look over right here. James, look. If you want wisdom in that situation, He says, ask Him, and He'll give it to you liberally. Obey if not. That's what He'll do. That, that, that's that's, 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 that's what'll happen. Hey, listen, oh, 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 right over here in Psalms, it says He's perfecting everything that concerns you. You're worried about school too much. You're worried about the teacher and how she's not like your last year's teacher. Forget about that. Son, you got to rise. We can't keep pointing fingers at new teachers. You got to rise up and learn from him or her. That, it, but the words, and, and, and it's like, okay, now you just gave him the word. But if you give him mere speeches, and no word, he's not going to feel. He's not going to feel empowered. He's going to go right back to school, still struggling. Why? We prolong people's deliverance when we substitute our mere words for the seed, which is the word of God. Mm. The seed. Next up, the seed of the word. Watch this. Is more than knowledge. It is, according to Jesus. A living power. It does not work mechanically. It works vitally. Mm. The seed doesn't work mechanically. Our natural words work mechanically. But the spirit of truth, the living truth, the one that said, Jesus said, if you drink of this, you'll never thirst. That word works vitally. The root word, vital, vitals, vitals. They check your vitals. To see if you're alive. They check your, your vitals to see. They check your pulse to see if, if you're still alive. It's, it's, it's the spirit, the, 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 the spirit of God, the word of God, the seed of God. It, it, it works vitally, not mechanically. Remember, this is a holy, this is the highest interaction you can have. It's a holy interaction between us and God's inspired word. The seed. If you're depressed, go to Strong's. Look up everything on depression. <laughs> If you struggle in relationships, get your strong dictionary and find every word in relationship and go to the Bible. Go to the seed first and read that book. Get your advanced dictionary and you can understand relationships from the Bible perspective. And I promise you it's going to supersede any motivational relationship book you can read when you begin to dig into the word of God and understand. I don't need steps. I need soul understanding. I need, I need to understand how the soul works thinker, feel a chooser. I need to understand the vitalness of the seed, which is the word of God that's going in me, because that's going to keep my mouth closed when it needs to be closed. That's going to get me out of bed to serve my husband. See, you want to be a wife side by side, but you got to be a wife and be ready to cook. 
get out of the bed and cook and serve. My wife, my wife first went home with me, and, and my daughter went home with me, and, and all the men were sitting down, and I didn't even know what was happening. My daughter said, my God, what in the ham cheese sandwiches going on around here? And I think she was eight, nine years old, m m maybe younger than that. Why? All the, the ladies were bringing the plates to the men. N not out of, we, not out of, you know, uh, 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 um, not because all the men are kahunas. It was just in the family. I, I guess that's, that, that's what they did. I didn't even notice it until she brought it up. And, and I, could, I could hear it in her voice. That is quite strange what they're doing there. I said, sweetheart, it's not strange. You're not looking for a husband. You're readying yourself to be a wife. And you got to serve when that happens. So 10 steps of this and five steps of this and all this kind of stuff, that's good. But you got to get some soul understanding and how the soul works. If you don't get that, you'll cut somebody off in a minute. You, you, you'll cut them off and think you can cut them off because you're married. You can't do that. You can't do that. Listen, were you blessed by the word of God? God blessed us today. God blessed you today. I want you to maintain a readiness to receive the seed, which is the word of God. I want you to, listen, I want to repeat it again. Get you a Vines Dictionary. Get you a Strong's Concordance. And I challenge you, whatever you're going through, whatever is bothering you, whatever quiet hurt that you have going on, I challenge you to get every scripture on it and begin to read about it. Get every scripture on that situation and begin to put that seed in you. And you're going to notice something. You're going to notice when I read this, I get excited for what I can get. But when I read this word, I get an understanding of my soul. I get an understanding of my spiritualness because I'm a spiritual being. I get an understanding of this foreverness from this incorruptible seed that God planted in me. Listen, you go from chasing a relationship to being the one chased. You go from being thirsty and a desperate dater to a wise waiter. Why? Because now you understand, oh, there's tremendous value on this soul richness right here. I'm so rich as a young man from the word of God. I don't want anything coming up in this, up in this space right here. <laughs> and I ain't chasing it. And my eyes are different now. Why? Because the word of God, the seed of God is governing my heart, is governing my actions. And I've given attention to it. But you give more attention to your friend in the dating process than you are to God. Listen, you're trusting yourself too much. You know why? Because your eyes ain't seeing stuff that it should be seeing. And you're trusting yourself too much. But then once you get hitched, all of a sudden, voila, it's there. You don't go home to mama and papa. It's no more good nights. It's good morning. Good morning to what? Deal with it. Pick up your cross and deal with it. Listen, repeat this after me. I choose the seed, which is the word of God. I choose the incorruptible seed that has a foreverness in me. You got to receive that. You got to receive that. You got to receive that. And you're, when you receive that, you carry yourself like the CEO of your life. You guard your gates. You guard your eyes. You guard your ears. You watch your emotions. You pay attention to yourself. You bring things before God. Why? You're not working to find a wife. You're working to become a husband. What kind of husband? A spiritual being that is a husband. And I speak it, listen, I speak it over your life now. The more the seed, which is the word of God, the more attention it gets from you, the closer you get to it and in union with it, it's going to remove what you thought was and bring forth the ideal. You go, my God, what in the world? You give God everything you got as far as your attention goes. You spend time with the true vine. You spend time with the word of God. 
and it begins to remove stuff, and it brings forth the ideal. Why? We're spiritual beings, and God loves us just that much. Amen? Father, I thank you for this word. And Father, I pray over the